Hey there, interwebs. Welcome back to How Fascinating and, preemptively, Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, tomorrow is turkey miss, and if you want to be the most insufferable smartass at the dinner table, just bring up tryptophan in the context of postprandial somnolence. Also, your phrase of the day is postprandial somnolence. If you want to be the second most insufferable smartass at the table, just start asking the hard questions, like, is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? The tryptophan scapegoating know-it-alls out there will tell us it's a fruit, while the traditional adage tells us that knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. A biologist can tell you that, as the seed-bearing structure formed from the mature ovary of a flowering plant, a tomato is a fruit, but a judge might tell you that it's not, and cite the 1893 U.S. Supreme Court case of Nix v. Hedden as legal precedent. That's right, I said 1893, which makes this year the 130th anniversary of tomatoes being legally considered vegetables in the U.S. for tax purposes, and I only wish I were joking. Older viewers may recall a more recent tomato-based controversy involving President Reagan, and for the benefit of younger viewers, again, not joking. To cut a long story short, the Reagan administration came under heavy criticism for attempting to slash $1.5 billion from children's nutritional funding. In order to assist schools in their attempts to provide lunches to students, which still met the minimum nutritional requirements at a lower cost, the USDA's Food and Nutrition Service published a report which included substitution suggestions, and ketchup and relish were officially deemed to be acceptable vegetables. Of course, even if we were to accept this farcical notion that condiments can comprise a significant source of nutrition, ketchup still wouldn't be a vegetable. It'd be a fruit. Right? Before I answer that question, let me issue a correction for a previous video. Way back in episode 21, I said that strawberries are the only fruit to bear their seeds on the outside, but this is incorrect. Cashew nuts grow on the outside of so-called cashew apples, but they aren't technically nuts, nor are cashew apples true fruits. Strawberries aren't true fruits either, nor are they, strictly speaking, berries for that matter. You see, because they don't develop solely from plants' ovaries and contain tissue derived from other parts of the plant, both strawberries and cashew apples are what are technically known as accessory fruits. For strawberries, this non-ovarian flesh develops from the receptacle, whereas it comes from the peduncle in cashew apples. Furthermore, strawberries are aggregate accessory fruits. Raspberries, blackberries, and mulberries are also aggregate fruits because they all develop from the merger of multiple ovaries within a single flower. Strawberries' alleged seeds, or pips, are actually the true fruit of the plant, better known as achenes, and these are each a single ovary containing the real seeds within. Being aggregate fruits, neither strawberries nor blackberries are, botanically speaking, berries, and slowberries aren't either, but you know what are? Bananas. So are watermelons, pumpkins, eggplants, and, wouldn't you know it, tomatoes. You hopefully now see that identifying what is and isn't technically a fruit can be rather deceptive, and it gets even trickier for vegetables. This is because vegetables don't exist. Now, I don't mean to say that Brussels sprouts, for example, are some sort of mass delusion or government conspiracy, although I kind of wish they were. I mean that, like fish and reptiles, vegetables are a paraphyletic grouping, as the taxonomists would say. In layperson's terms, this means that there is no group of organisms or parts thereof which includes all traditional vegetables and nothing else. For example, what do carrots, asparagus, spinach, broccoli, and cucumbers have in common? They're all vegetables, but that's pretty much it. A carrot is a root, while asparagus is the stalk. Spinach is leaves, and broccoli florets are flowers, and cucumbers, much like the ever-controversial tomato, are technically another fruit. On the other hand, what do cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, kohlrabi, and collard greens all have in common? Short answer, they're all the same plant. The longer, and more technically accurate, answer is that they're different cultivars of the same plant species, Brassica oleracea. If you don't know what a cultivar is, you can think of them as being like dog breeds, but for plants. A Yorkie ain't the same dog as a Tibetan Mastiff, but they're all C. lupus familiaris, if you catch my drift. I feel that the confusion comes, in large part, from the lack of a solid, universal definition. You see, in a scientific sense, the word vegetable just means related to plants, such as we see in phrases like vegetable matter, vegetable kingdom, or the vegetable lamb of tartary, but from a culinary standpoint, a vegetable is simply an edible plant, or the edible part thereof. This definition is also sometimes stretched to include fungi and algae, like mushrooms and seaweed, or shrunk to exclude fruits like apples and oranges. So where does that leave us regarding the humble tomato? Biologically, it's a fruit, while legally it's a vegetable, but the definition of vegetable might be any plant, any edible plant, just the edible part of the plant, or any edible plant part which isn't a fruit. So I guess the answer to the question, is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable, is, well, what do you want it to be? Thanks for watching, and have a fascinating Thanksgiving.
Personally, I hate Brussels sprouts. When people tell me that's because I don't cook them right, I ask them for the recipe, and it almost invariably involves a lot of butter, garlic, cheese, and frequently bacon. To this I reply that they haven't actually made the sprouts taste good, they've merely used lots of better flavors to mask a bad one. Doing so is a bit like saying your electric skateboard can reach speeds of 65 miles an hour when being carried in the trunk of your car.